Um, and I'd like to take a second uh, to thank the town employees, the people that um, worked on their days off, that postponed vacations, that worked extended hours, that worked in multiple positions, the people that answered the phone calls, the people that normally don't answer the phone calls that answer the phone calls. I'm proud of the work of all you did, and I know everybody else here is too, and um, you really should be um, thankful, and or we should be thankful, and you guys should be proud of the fact of the great job that you all did. Um, there's too many people to name. You, you'd have to go by departments, the fire department, the police department, the DPW department. Um, I'm looking at, at Sheila across the way. She, you know, She's the conduit to so much of the communication that goes on in town hall. You did a great job. And um, it really is, uh, uh, as Joe was saying, we're fortunate to have the employees that we have here um, working for us through, through an emergency like this. Um, the, um, I guess I'll go on a second more before I pass along to you guys. I would say that the majority of the people <clears throat> in the town handled this situation well. Obviously, everyone was frustrated. Everybody was inconvenienced, um, but for the most part, 90x percent of the people muddled through it. Um, unfortunately, there's a small percentage of people um, who take it to an extreme and, and somehow uh, um, treat town employees rudely, um, yell, threaten, and name call. And it's not a lot, but it's, it's a few, and it sticks out. And, and what I'd like to just ask everybody is to treat Treat the town employees in a professional manner. They're on your side. They're trying to solve the problems um, as best as they can. And a lot of times, they're your neighbor. You know, they are in the same situation that you are. So um, in the future, again, treat them professionally. Um, you wouldn't put up with it. We wouldn't put up with it. And they shouldn't have to put up with it either. Again, they're doing their best to try and alleviate the situation and make it go um, as smoothly as possible. Um, I think. Also, the chief could probably, uh, I just alluded to a second ago, it was a tropical storm. Um, the, my, uh, what was the highest gusts were in the high 40s, I think you said they were, they were measured? I think the, from what I had heard, it was probably maybe even in the 50s. Right. Was that the, uh, 62 on Third Cliff. 62 on Third Cliff. So really, if it was a real hurricane, it would have been, you know, up to twice as much as that. So um, I think this is a learning experience for the town. I think we're going to look back at what we did and see what we can do better. Certainly communication was an issue that we had to deal with in terms of phone being down, internet being down, and how do we communicate to each other and to the, to the residents. Um, and I think hopefully everybody is, is looking at it internally and saying, what do I have to do as um, a homeowner in this, in this town to deal with a situation like this? We're still in hurricane season. All you have to do is watch the weather to see something else stirring up down there um, in the Gulf or um, in the Pacific headed up this way. So hopefully we won't get anything else, but um, you know, hopefully this is an opportunity for the town and for residents to look at how to handle these situations. Um, again, I know that we'll be discussing it with the chief and with Tricia and everybody else to figure out what we can do better in the future um, you know, once we get through all of the, the stuff that we're dealing with. Um, I've been yapping a bit. Anybody else want to add anything regarding the storm? Yeah, I do, actually, if anybody else is before I did. I just wanted to say, uh, actually concur with what you're saying with the town employees. You know, we opened up the uh, transfer station. We also had employees going out dealing with trees down. Fire did an excellent job. Police did, too, um, both surveilling uh, the neighborhoods with the loss of electricity. So it was a real town effort, which, you know, a lot of people don't realize. Um, a lot of new issues were brought to the forefront. You know, the last time we lost um, electricity for an extended period of time was about 20 years ago. And, of course, at that time, with new technology it creates new issues. People have their cell phones, it has to be charged. People have um, emails and their computers, can't use it without electricity. Whereas 20 years ago you had your telephone, telephone would work because you didn't have to have electricity because of the wiring. So it was a lot easier to get communication if the telephone lines weren't down. Um, we were very fortunate to, um, and blessed that um, you know this wasn't January, February, um, or December in the colder months. Um, because by, with the lack of electricity, uh, it was much more bearable. Plus it wasn't hot and humid like it was in the middle of July. So. I think as a town we were fortunate and um, you know the only thing that I certainly would raise and I certainly was curious was is that you know projections I'm glad to see that uh, representative Cantwell's here because in uh, December Cantwell uh, representative Cantwell along with uh, town administrator really were vigilant in trying to make sure that we had national grid here and they finally responded um, and then we had a, a hearing here 
Um, with respect to national grid's poor response in December, as a result, they were penalized and they had to pay a penalty. Um, to my chagrin, um, looking at all the data that was coming forward, it was, I was surprised to see that Situate, number one, had the largest, one of the largest percentages of people without electricity. Number two, it remained that way and actually was disproportionate by the end of the week. And I have to tell you right now, I certainly think it's suspect as a board member, and I think this board should take a look at it in the future, to say, you know, why is it that our town, after having gone through what it went through back in December, ended up getting, being the last one? I heard rumors that it was because they were trying to deal with the bigger bang for the buck, the bigger population with people. Fair enough, I understand that if that's legitimate. But then I found out rumors had it that they were trying to open up areas that had schools that opened sooner than the town of Situate. All this is innuendo and speculative, but I think it draws the question uh, that I think this board needs to tackle in the future with National Grid and say, why is it that Situate, as of Friday, had one quarter of its residents without um, uh, electricity? And I think that's, that's awful. I think it's uh, ridiculous that National Grid did that um, without some explanations. And I just think we as a board need to ask that of them in the future. <coughs> I raise it now, but um, I have to say, you know, everybody dealt with it. I think it was a great opportunity to get through this bad situation given the weather. Um, and everybody stepped up. But I have to say, National Grid was a no-show for most of the week. And, um, you know, any event. That was my comments on it, and I just wanted to share with <coughs> the board. Anything else? Um, John, as you know, they, they, I'm sorry, go ahead, John. If, if, if I could, if I was just going to let Rick go first. <clears throat> if, if it's all right with you, I, I just would like to name one person, all right, and, and I know, but it's, it, but it's important, and that's Tricia. Tricia was supposed to go on vacation on Friday. I just want people to know, because we all get a lot of phone calls, you know, what's the town doing and, and so forth, and I, you know, and after things settled down a little bit and got my thoughts together. I said, well, first of all, our town administrator was supposed to go away on Friday. She didn't leave till Monday. President of the National Grid, the woman, took off to Hawaii and didn't care too much about it, then decided to come home. But, you know, that's, that's where it starts. And I couldn't agree with you more, Tony, uh, you know, that the you know, police and fire and DBW women did a fantastic job. But there's only so much you can do when these wires are live without causing a, a lot of problems. And I would like to discuss it a little bit further at another meeting. You know, a lot of people had comments and, and, and thoughts and things like that that I'd like to, you know, explore a little further, you know. So and hopefully we can, you know, Representative Cantwell will be able to come back at some time and, you know, we can discuss a little further. Like John said, I, I just, again, we weren't, uh, it, was, it was everywhere, but still, it was very frustrating for a lot of people. Sure was. So. And just to add on a couple of things, um, Tricia on vacation was calling me and emailing me every day, so there was constant communication. And the chief did an unbelievable job in stepping into two roles of town administrator and police chief in an emergency. So I know you're saying you don't think it's a big deal, but you handled it well and you communicated well, um, although there wasn't a lot to communicate at times. Um, you know, you did a great job as well. And John brought up. Um, Representative Cantwell, he was on conference calls every day with National Grid doing whatever he could to get resources down to this town to get um, us moving quicker and, and getting people restored quicker. So thank you for all the work you did as well. Rick. I just wanted to chime in. I agree with the spectrum of comments here about the people in town, the people in town hall and all the employees. And what Sean was saying about Tricia, I agree across the board with the comments. And I too look forward to having discussions with National Grid. And there's a forum for that. We just got an email a while ago with the, the stuff to, to fill out to give them feedback. And, and, you know, there will be a procedure, as always, that goes down to this. And Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just to jump in, I just yeah. I think you all said it very well, and I couldn't agree more. Thank you. Right. Jim, did you want to add anything at this point? Any? Sure. I, 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 to, to, to very briefly, the, the main purpose I came with was to see Joe. <laughs> 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 so that's why I'm here. Exactly. <laughs> and, and, and by the way, Joe, if I may, at one point, Joe and I attended a very historic moment just last year, the year before, the Unitarian Church, if you recall, was having their, I think it was like their 200th anniversary uh, of, of this church. 300. Yep. 300. 300. I, I cut off a century today. 350, I think. Uh, but at the event, they were talking how difficult it was of how people would go to church and that there was no heat, so they would have to bring things to put in their feet so they get warm and there were, there were no lights and they talked how difficult that was and how storms would come and they're saying how bad it was and, and if you remember I, I was joking saying I, I nudged Joe and he said 
It wasn't that bad, really. I was a slave in that. <laughs> <laughs> um, just but, feels that way, that's yeah. all. <laughs> but uh, for our purpose, uh, to echo what you were saying, it, the situation was so well prepared for our, our professionals. Uh, the chief steward here, chief judge, who, who had a loss in the family in the midst uh, of this. Uh, Trish, who I didn't even know was on vacation because I was calling and she was always responding and, and helping to coordinate matters in tone and yourself because every day when you were calling saying these are certain uh, sections that are still without power. Uh, one thing I want to know is, is through Tony, there were priorities given to National Grid at the very beginning, I think Sunday before the storm hit, and three of the priorities after getting the roads cleared and making sure that the chief of E911 was up so that we had power. After that, the senior housing was one of the earliest priorities that this board made as a priority, that, that Trish made as a priority, uh, to make sure that, that our seniors and some of the locations, it was Wheeler, it was Lincoln, and, and Central. Uh, folks who have oxygen tanks, people who can't get around very easily, uh, and it was extremely upsetting that, that it wasn't until Wednesday that two of them came online. Thursday, I was at Central Park, Chief, as you know, he was sending people over. Um, so that, that is something. We, we certainly, Chief, with your suggestion and Trish, having a, a meeting to debrief of, of how, I think the town did an excellent job, but we certainly can always look for ways to perhaps uh, improve how we do things together. Uh, but the, the clear need is, is for National Grid to do a better job responding to our town after just being fined about $2.2 million because of the poor response back in December. And thanks, John, when you were the chair, right here calling them out on the carpet. Uh, for them to again uh, look like they, they weren't responding in the most uh, expeditious manner is just unacceptable. That being said, not only should people be kind to the workers for the town who did a great job, but the National Grid people who responded, the linemen, linemen oh, yeah. the folks, they did a Herculean effort uh, within the people who came and, and just with your direction, Chief, and others, uh, the, the linemen who were out there working did a great job. So we want to make sure, sure people are, know where to, to direct their, their angst. And there will be, as a final thing, there are going to be, at the very least, meetings, if not hearings, uh, where we'll be able to have this information brought. Uh, the Department of Public Utilities is a group, Jane Berwick, who you and I spoke to, Trish, the day after the, the uh, storm in December. We've already spoken to her again. There will be a review of, of their response to make sure that, that it was appropriate uh, under or in the circumstances. And there will be, John, ways to address why Situ is always, uh, or in this case, seemed to, to have a lion's share of people who were, were out there in the end. So I thank you for everyone's efforts here. Mostly, Joe, welcome back. We're thrilled to see thank you, you again and look forward to many more meetings in the future. Thank you. Chief, before we move on, did you have anything to add? Working in these offices here, that uh, you know, and, and 
it's for us, I mean, it's, you know, we ask people, please don't call us. We don't know when the power's going to come back. I don't, know, I don't honestly, you know, you know, as it turned out, they told us things that were totally not uh, correct, you know, so, but, uh, you know, for the most part, 98% of the people were fine, but what did you refer to? Yeah, but in particular, those two folks that were answering the phones and the selectmen and the town administrator's office. But my guys and my people and, and that fire and DPW and, and you know, all the town departments that uh, you know, kicked in and got the job done. You know, and, and, uh, great. You did a great job. Um, Zach, just a qu quick question. Are we live? Okay, so we're taping and we'll replay it. Wonderful. I'm getting tests. I mean, so many people watch us on a regular basis. And <laughs> phone's going crazy. Um, <laughs> You're getting texts to say, "Where are you?" <laughs> oh, that's too you much. Really gonna be? <laughs> oh, that's just great. So, uh, so and again, with the storm, um, we will uh, we'll we'll look at it internally. What the town of Sidgwick can do. We'll address National Grid. And what uh, what our relationship with there is, um, but again, know that everyone here did the best that they could. Um, the town is not responsible for the electricity going out to its citizens, although we are here to support it. And um, uh, clearly, National Grid was overwhelmed by this storm. Um, Want to move on to the next? Sure. Yeah. Great. Um, number three, uh, uh, walk-in period. Is anyone here for a walk-in? Miss Burvine. Ann Burbine, 10 Penny Crest Road. Um, I am the acting chair of Social Coalition, and I had given the chairman a letter, and I understand with all of the what have you that we've gone through over the last week or so, I had hoped to have been on the agenda tonight, and that didn't happen. Um, Social Coalition is concerned about the Four River Bridge. As a matter of fact, there was an editorial in the ledger on Saturday, and it's ma Department of Transportation wants a bridge that is 272 feet tall. The neighbors want a bridge that's 72 feet tall. Um, Department of Transportation wants a bridge that costs $70 million more. As the ledger pointed out, we, you know, we <coughs> really want a Ford, not a Cadillac. So the Social Coalition is having a forum about this issue on the 22nd of September at the Hingham Town Hall. A letter will be going out to <coughs> Mass Department of Transportation, which I, as acting chair, will sign. There are, are a number of municipalities that may be listed. I know that you can't vote on this, but just I'm letting you know that the letter will be going out over my signature, just to let you be aware. It, it's the Social Coalition. So there you have it. Any questions? No, Ann and I have spoke about this. As obviously, the storm has kind of taken precedent on it. We are meeting on the 21st, mm -hmm. um, so we can get some sort of letter signed if we need to. to no, show we don't really. Um, I've talked to the to our administrative person at MAPC. It's it's going out under the auspices of the Social Coalition, of which we are members. So, but I just that's wanted good. to keep you. Yeah, that's great. Great. In the know. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jan. Thanks, Ann. That and temporary we, bridge has been there for what, eight years now? <laughs> Something like that, yeah. Are there any other walk-ins? It'll be a lot longer. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we have a short uh, agenda tonight. Um, move on to number three, which is the uh, common vehiculars, all kinds of alcoholic beverage license for um, 17 New Driftway, Inc. DBA Backyard Burger Bar. Come on up. Good evening. If you could just introduce yourselves and give your address. I'm Bob Berwick, uh, trustee of Greenbush Realty Trust, owner of the building at 17 New Driftway. And this is my future tenant, hopefully. Joan Wilson, 8 Claymore Terrace, Citroen. Great. Great. So you're here before us um, to get a liquor license for 
a restaurant, the hamburger bar? Backyard Burger Bar. Hamburger Bar. Okay. Want to tell us a little bit about the establishment and what your plans are? And mm -hmm. Mr. Vignani, if yes. I may? Just one thing. We're talking about Raymond's Paints? Yes. Right. The, okay. Just, just so everybody knows, because right. the address, you know, might not be that helpful. So. Good point. Okay. Great. Thanks. Well, I'm going to be open for lunch and dinner. I'm going to be open five days a week, close Mondays and Tuesdays, for, you know, when I open up um, late fall. And I'm going to have um, all natural, no antibiotics, no hormones, the food, the, all the <coughs> foods that I'm going to be serving. Um, it's going to be very different than everybody, anybody else has um, a situation. How's it going to be different? Um, the atmosphere is going to be a little funky. Um, it's going to have um, just a bunch of different stuff inside. Anyways. What, what do you think your clientele is? Um, well, I'm aiming to get, you know, 30s and up. So would you consider it more of a restaurant or more of a bar? Say both. I won't know till I get there, but I'm hoping that it's equally, you know, bar crowds and dinner. Like a pub? Yeah, pub. And again, this is at, at Raymond's. Yes. Um, you recently purchased Raymond's paint. Um, well, I don't, did you own it before? Yes. Yeah, okay, sure. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, yeah, the ownership is not changing. Of the building itself, right? It's being reconfigured. Great. Let me uh, pass it on down the line here for questions, and then we can. Yeah, um, just a quick question. I appreciate the packet you all gave us with the uh, you know, general idea. I'm not going to hold you to this exact sign, but you know, sort of gets the gestalt of the thing across in the menu. Unfortunately, I started reading this around 4 o'clock in the afternoon the other day, which, well, you know, got me all hungry and so on. Um, Tony asked an interesting question about you see yourselves more as a, a bar or a restaurant. And um, for me, there's no right answer to that, but I'm just curious because I was looking at the plans and I, I don't see a lot of tables that are not associated with a bar unless I'm misreading this. <coughs> and again, there's no right answer um, in my eyes. I'm not, I'm not personally angling for one way or the other, but I'm just curious because, um, just so I know what, what we're discussing about. Well, um, there's, um, there's 20 seats at the bar and then 44, um, you know, seats, including with the tables and chairs. Oh, there's and 44 around there? Yes. Um, can, when we bring this up, Michelle? Yeah, yeah, yeah. there's about 12 booths if you yeah. go around the perimeter. So those are all the booths, like yes. one, two, three. Okay. And then to the left of the men's room, around to the yep. ladies' room, and around that corner. Yeah. Right those there. fifty-four. Those numbers, fifty-fours. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh -huh. All right. Looks like you have forty-eight tables. Forty-eight seats. Yeah. Forty-eight seats. Yeah. Okay. All right. Cool. Um, and then the only other question I had was uh, I appreciate the clarification on that. I'm not used to looking at plans like that. If it's a plan of a ship, I do all right, but not on a building. Um, we got a letter, a copy of a letter from Al Bangert, head of DPW, addressed to you, Mr. Addressed to you, Mr. Berwick, about I am receiving the planning board's approval of site plan administrative review for all, for all this sort of stuff. <coughs> and it talks about a change in usage on the number of sewer units because obviously the number of people is going to go up compared to what it used to be. And um, I guess my question is, is so when this says basically the expansion of the number of people going in there requires a certain number of sewer units and each sewer unit is about $13,500 and so it adds up to nine times that which is $109,500. Um, yeah, I, don't, I don't know how to reconcile all this. I got two moving pieces here. We're in shock over that letter as well. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, my engineer, Greg Morse, has sent a letter to uh, Mr. Bangert um, with some information he has researched. 
and um, we're addressing that and uh, requesting some relief. Uh, Understandable. From CPW. Yeah. Um, short of that, um, we may be back here to seek relief from you. Understood. Yeah, because we're the sewer commissioners and the water commissioners, so right. yeah, somehow that's going to end up here. That's um, almost a deal breaker. Yeah. We're still reacting to it. Sure. And I notice this is a very recent letter as well. So um, overall, I like the idea. I like the idea of what they're doing. I think, you know, the more people we bring down into the village and that general area, you know, I, I'm in favor of, of the, the plan and all this sort of stuff. Um, because of this letter, I, I don't feel I can move ahead on this tonight until this gets resolved, but I'm willing to hear other things. It's just that there's another moving piece on this, just because it's not as simple as that. But just I want to reassure you overall, I really like this idea. I think it's a nice plan. I like the menu. I like the location, mm -hmm. um, uh, particularly as we try to build up Greenbush. That's ad this adds a little more variety into the Greenbush area. Um, <coughs> and, uh, I think it's a good location near the train station. You know, there's a, there's a whole bunch of good things going going on this. Um, but I just, with this other moving piece in there, I don't know what to do until I get some more guidance. That's just where I am at this point, and I'm completely willing to be, right? be re-educated on this. John, any? Uh, not right Not right now, just. Um, Sean, any? <clears throat> um, I was gonna go last. It's, there's no doubt I, I, I had a run out and grab my phone, but uh, this, this, you know, the sewer usage is going to go up without a doubt. But like as Rick said, you know, this is a great thing for Greenbush. It'd be a great thing for the harbor, and it'd be a great thing for North Situate. You know, I was sitting at home wondering, you know, you know, thinking about this, and I look out in the audience, and I don't see any of the abutters. All right, that to me. <coughs> would really sway me one way or the other if I lived around this and not seeing any I think they've all been notified am I correct by green cards right mm -hmm. and not seeing anyone here tells me that they're in favor of it so who you know if they're in favor of it I, I think I think it's a, a, a great idea just wonder I wonder you know is there going to be enough parking but that's really not for us to decide you yeah, know and out front is still going to be a dance studio. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I, I, lo I look forward to it. I, I think it's great. If you think you can do it, you know, good luck. Um, this is what we need. This is what the economical development company is looking. You know, the, the committee they're, they're looking for stuff like this. We need to help them figure out a way to make it get it done. If we talk about doing all this stuff, and here they are willing to do it. Right. Yeah, we got to help them. If you know, unless I mean, you know. Yeah, unless we see a bunch of red flags. But you know what? Good luck. Thank you, Mr. Dorff. Again, I share everyone's enthusiasm uh, for, for the idea and the restaurant. The, the issue on the uh, sewer betterment fees is a legitimate one, unfortunately. As you said yourself, I mean, it's almost a deal breaker in your eyes. And in our eyes, I think it's, it's uh, not certainly not a deal breaker. That's your situation but it's something we have to resolve before we can move forward so the sooner that's resolved uh, the better it's going to be for us and you and the the new owners uh, so it, again I don't know what back and forth with letters and all that but I think the board will probably want to see uh, some resolution to that situation because that's a precedent <coughs> that we don't want to set here tonight you know uh, allowing this to go through with, with that hanging over our heads. So that's the way I feel. The idea is fine. I can't see any reason why I wouldn't vote for it. Uh, but let's get that issue in my mind right away. What's, if you were to give a, a liquor license, Ms. Wilson, what, what are the hours of operation? Looking for beer and wine uh, or all kinds? All alcohol. Um, in, it, 12 to 9 uh, during the week and 12 to 10 on weekends. Yeah. So I think I saw that you're looking to open up at 11:30 during the weekdays. Yeah, 11:30. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. So just to be able to cover the times of operation. I mean, it's at Sunday 12 because I know you can't serve liquor before noon. So. And um, it's only for five days that you're seeking. When I first opened, but then I'm going to be open six days a week. I'm definitely going to be closed one day a week. 
So if you're be given by this board a five-day uh, liquor license, that would be acceptable for now, and then can come back to the board if you're to open up for a six-day. Yes. Okay. Um, my the way I look at it is is that um, you know it's in the business district. This is a business. Um, it's a restaurant. I've seen the operations of the f restaurant they're running in, uh, in Pembroke. It's order. Uh, it's well run. It's well, uh, uh, you know, um, the menu, the food, the decor, um, and it's not a bar. Uh, I've seen the former restaurant they used to own on um, Front Street, which is Riva. It was well done. It was originally um, was the Catch. What was it called? Daily yeah. Catch. The Daily Catch. And prior, you know, they opened up and made it a, a really nice looking restaurant did a well job a, a good job and well done and I think they've proven themselves that they know how to run a business they know how to make sure it doesn't turn into a bar and uh, you know make it a nice restaurant with food you're you're, you're trying to do something that is somewhat unique um, you know I, I commend you for it and I certainly support it wholeheartedly you know the issue on the sewers is another issue it could create a problem I don't know but at this point I, I would certainly be supportive of it I know there are issues of traffic and issues about parking I, I have to say I think parking <laughs> may be a problem. That's an issue with the landlord. It's also an issue with hammerheads out in front, um, and that's going to be an issue yeah. that's going to have to <coughs> work itself out. Yeah. And as far as the traffic goes, I know that the um, railway station was put in under a traffic study. It was expecting to have at least three quarters, or if not um, two thirds, more traffic, um, and that hasn't come to fru uh, come to fruition. So I don't think that's going to be an issue of having 60 or 51 cars at max parked there. You're saying you have 48 seats for booths. You got 20 around the bar. Um, if it were the other way around, I'd be a little bit more worried that it's more of a bar. Um, but knowing your operations, yeah, I think it works. That's right. They just like yeah. sit at the bar. You know, it's oh yeah. People like, people like the bar atmosphere, I guess. And it's not like um, you're trying to do something that's a little more um, not just like I say. It is a hamburger, or uh, that's what you're trying, but you're trying to upgrade it to something that's much more um, healthier. And I. Again, it's going to attract a certain element of people who are looking for that type, as opposed to give me a Mickey D's or uh, you know a, a burger at a bar. So, I, I would I would support it. I think the uh, um, other issue, obviously, is not before us at this time, but I'd certainly would address it at a future issue. But for now, I I, I have no problems with with doing it. That's my two cents. Great. Um, <clears throat> just to add to some of the comments, I I think. It, as I think Rick mentioned, it doesn't matter if it's a bar or a restaurant. I think the perception was there's a hamburger place coming to Raymond's Paint, which makes you think it's a place where you're going to bring your kids to get burgers. And just by looking at the plans, you know, the floor plan, it's more of a bar. I mean, I was thinking, is it just beer and wine? Is it full alcohol? Is it a burger place? And it's no, it's more of an adult place that the bar takes up probably just as much square footage as, as the restaurant, which is, like Rick said, isn't good or bad. It's just the perception of what people think as to what and what I thought right off the bat as opposed to what it is. You know, either either be be great. Um, the um, the the other thing about the, the betterment fees, um, you know, I think you kinda hit the nail on the head. It's a deal breaker. You know, so that that really has to be resolved because I imagine you want it resolved as well because I would imagine if the landlord gets hit with an additional hundred thousand dollar fee that some of it's going to be passed on to you in the rent and then does the whole business model work anymore so um, I think I support the idea of a restaurant going in there um, like I said Greenbush could use it but until we get that resolved I think I would be a little hesitant in going forward and giving you the liquor license tonight um, as as Sean had mentioned as well you know sometimes people not showing up is a good sign and sometimes they just don't know about it but when it shows up in the papers on Thursday um, you know it, it, it um, creates some interest and, and then people show up in support or in what or not in support at a later time um, so I would I would probably recommend we wait two weeks to our next meeting before we actually vote on mm -hmm. the license and see if we can get the betterment thing resolved and see if we give people another opportunity to come to the floor and, and voice any of opinion on it, and then go from there. Did you have, yes yeah, sir? I'd, I'd like to um, just address a couple of issues. Um, first would be a procedural. I don't know how many licenses, liquor licenses, licenses are available in the town, or whether they're a first come, first serve. Um, what is that, what does the delay do in terms of holding this license for um, Backyard Burger Bar? 
I think there's one license left in the town. And um, is the delay effect? That well, there's no one on the agenda for Thursday to deal with that license. So, you know, as of two minutes, we could put you on the agenda and and you would be, <clears throat> you know, the first first in line for it. Obviously, I don't I don't believe it's legal for us to hold the license, mm -hmm. um, but you know, we could Sheila, we could put on the agenda right now for the 21st, and there's no one else pursuing it at that point in time. Um, secondly, as far as um, uh, parking and traffic is concerned, um, we needed um, by right to provide, I believe it was 34 spaces, and we've provided uh, 20 additional spaces. So um, I, I think um, we've more than addressed that issue. Um, our engineer um, was able to um, configure it so that we had in excess, I believe, of 56 spaces um, um, available on the site. And um, we have a great site plan that was worked out that allows for uh, more than adequate parking, um, knowing that we had to keep people off the dripway. Uh, in the in the event of an overflow, uh, traffic wise, <coughs> there was a concern uh, by town planner about the uh, entrance to the um, present Raymond's uh, parking lot, and um, we reconfigured it to their satisfaction. Uh, we've changed it to a 90 degree angle instead of uh, like a 150, so that uh, it's th there is now a sight vision in both directions on the driftway of. Mm in excess of 300 feet. So we have good visibility. Uh, we put in a request to the DPW that um, there'd be some clearing along the sidewalk that was provided between our site and the, um, and the train station because there's a lot of overgrowth there. And if in fact we can, uh, in, in conjunction with the uh, DPW, get that cleared, um, we can have an even better sight line if we do some, some maintenance there. Um, we w would like to state that we went through uh, planning board, zoning board, and conservation all in single meetings and received approvals um, from all of those committees, oh, single good. meeting, one time, um, and unanimously. There was, there was no uh, dissent among any of those, those boards. They were all in favor um, of what we're doing. Uh, neighbors were notified, certified mail for all of those meetings. As, as Sean mentioned tonight, um, um, there is not a big re ad there is no adverse reaction at all in the neighbor in the neighborhood. We we personally canvas. We've talked to all the neighbors. Everyone is in favor uh, and excited about what we're doing. Did any of them show up at any of the other meetings? One. Wow. We had one. We've only had. Good. Uh, aside from you, we've only had one neighbor. <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, Mr. Cantwell. I think, Mr. Chairman, I just briefly wanted to say that all of the points going to the zoning board, the planning board, conservation, hearing about the business model here, and I just wanted to add the two cents. I just, I've known Joan Wilson for about two decades, and, and the neighbors were concerned she would have the ultimate manner of being very professional, running a terrific establishment. Uh, John already talked about Viva and as well as Edward. So, but just knowing her personally, I, I didn't know they were coming tonight, uh, but it's just to put my two cents in that you've heard about the business model and all, all the planning zoning issues on a personal level because the zone is an excellent place. Thank you. I just had uh, two quick questions. Uh, Joe mentioned a dance, or somebody mentioned a dance studio as well. Where is that going exactly? That's going in the front of the building um, where the actual retail floor of the paint store was. It's the Deval Dance Studio from Situate Harbor that's um, relocating to the front of the building. And then the back two sections of the building uh, will be occupied by the back, uh, backyard burger bar. So the entrance will be on the side if you drove Correct. past the building? Correct. It will be along. So the you'll side. actually park in the front, walk past the dance place in, in the, in the side? There will be a walkway along the side of the building that we'll, okay. we will construct uh, with a very nice entrance uh, to the restaurant. And one other quick question. You keep saying we. So I just didn't know. Did you have? Do you have some sort of ownership in the restaurant as well? No, no, no. no. So it's just your restaurant, your building. Correct. Right. Any other questions? So are we in agreement to just put it on the agenda for the twenty-first? Mm-hmm. And if you can try and get that resolved 
with Al, um, and obviously it'll come before us. Mm -hmm. We'll be in the loop there. Um, yes, sir. Joni, do you know why we're doing that? And I, if, if you're not real clear, I just want to tell you that because <clears throat> people may have waited years and years to get tied into the sewer. Okay. And by if some you know someone comes along and uses a lot more capacity, that might mean that someone else cannot get connected. <clears throat> and for a long time, we'd have to sit here and, and listen to their situation why we couldn't tie them in because we didn't have the capacity and we had priority districts and all that stuff that were really DEP, you know, held a gun to our head that we couldn't really allow any more flow into the into the treatment plant. So I think that's you know, that's where we're coming from. Am I right, Joe? I mean, yeah, for many that's years, very close. Yep. it was the hardest thing to sit here and say, I'm sorry, we can't tie your house in, you know, and they'd have to build tight tanks and all that stuff. But mm -hmm. Well, know, even more than that, it's the law. It's the state law. Yeah. Al's just literally taking it, and John, you can, you know, just taking it right from the law that you have to pay the betterment based on the number of usage. There's a state formula for it. It was written up here somewhere. 60-something seats equals nine usages. You paid for one and a half, you owe seven and a half. So that's, I believe it can be addressed by volume as well. Uh, and that's the, the approach. That right. So you've got two Correct. weeks to try and figure it out. So move to um, postpone hearing for two weeks. Second. Second by Mr. Harris. All in favor? Aye. 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 Right. Thank you guys for coming in. See you in two and weeks. Um, you know, we'll be, we'll be able to pick up where we, kind of where we let off. Okay, we'll move on to item number four, which is the uh, alcohol compliance violation. I think it's just, just a procedural of whether or not there is um, a vote based on the information submitted. I think we can talk about the penalty as well. Okay. If I could ask you two just to mm. go out there so the next people can. No, I don't think we should. Thanks. Talk about penalty. You don't think we should? I don't think so. Procedurally. I think. <coughs> yes, if you can come up here, please. I'm just reading the action sought, Tony. Can we? Tony? Yep. I'm just reading the action sought on the blue slip. And the suggested motion. Mm. And so I, I, I would, or not I would hearing should be definitely hearing. not get into the facts, right? Because we don't have facts. No. Maybe that's and there hasn't been a. Mm. <coughs> Is that the way you read it as well? I did go ahead and repeat. That it's it's just it's just a motion to hold the hearing. Mm. No discussion. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. I think that's what we have to do. Yes. Is that right, Chief? Yes. Do you have a copy of the police report? Mm -hmm. Yes. But I, I guess the question here is the motion is just to hold the hearing, that yes. this actually yeah. is not the hearing. Can I, exactly. Can I report to just a, uh, a discussion of the situation? Determine whether let a me, violation let occurred. Let me, suge let me suggest this. Uh, information has been submitted to us from the uh, police, uh, Brian, uh, Chief Brian Stewart, um, from uh, Lieutenant W. Michael Stewart concerning alcohol compliance checks. Uh, we've also received an incident report um, concerning uh, their compliance checks and potential violators of, of it. Um, and consequently, information has been put forward on one, um, one establishment that may or allegedly um, is in, uh, was in, uh, failed during those compliance checks. Um, I think the board's job tonight is to determine whether or not, based on the information submitted to the Board of Selectmen, whether or not uh, the board should hold a liquor license violation hearing for any non-compliant establishment. Uh, as a result of the compliance checks on August 6th. Um, personally, from reviewing this information, I, for one, believe that there is enough information sufficient to be able to hold a hearing, and I would suggest that the board should hold a hearing um, either at its next meeting or the meeting thereafter. Um, so that's my position on it. Mr. Murray. What he said. <laughs> Agreed. Okay. Um, do you two want to say anything? I thought we were here for a hearing. Yeah, okay. that's what we were here. Yeah. You're not. No. Okay. Not so tonight is really just the procedure of us 
looking at the information that we've been given to decide whether there's enough information to actually hold a hearing. And what it seems like uh, the tenor of the board is to hold the meeting. So we will do that, gather more information, and that at that point in time, we'll actually have back and forth conversation discussing it. Um, what I would suggest is that if you could swing by town hall and get, I don't know if you have a copy of the guidelines that we use for liquor li violations, at least you'll have that handy so you can see that as well. And, um, and then they can. And the information supplied to us, they right. should have. That's all public documentation too. Yeah, because yeah. we don't have any of that. Okay. Yeah. So, so you can get all that as well. Um, and then we'll discuss it in detail at, at a further meeting. Um, before I set the date, I want to sit yeah, down with Sheila and see what, what, this, what the load looks for the next couple of meetings. Maybe, um, yeah, we should see what the load looks, and uh, it might take a certain amount of preparation time. So I personally would be good with not necessarily our next meeting, but maybe after that. But we don't want to let this linger either. Right. If, if I may, I know that we have a suggested motion. Um, Sheila, was that something that, that you concluded we needed to do, or Chief, was that something you needed to do? For purposes, it seems like we need to set a specific date, but in the past, I don't recall that other than giving ample notice to the uh, alleged offender and then providing, I think, uh, uh, notice in the newspaper of it, creating a hearing. Is that correct? Yes, I'm sorry. Okay. Yes, I think that we have to this. Okay. All right. Yeah. So that for your benefit, get the information and then follow up with the um, Board of Selectmen for the benefit of finding out when the hearing. We'll, we'll inform you. I think we, we have their information. Yeah. yeah. So we'll, we'll yeah. certainly inform you. Plus, we have to post it in the newspaper. Right. You got our folders? Yes, we do. Thank you. So okay. just, just so we're all on the same page, our next meeting is Wednesday, the 21st, and our meeting after that is Tuesday, October 4th. Okay. Just to, so you all know what Why are we on Wednesday? I forget about play. that. Because well, we you couldn't make Tuesday. Oh, that's, oh no, that's in September. Because uh, I'm here on someone's going to be back on vaca from oh, vacation right, right. then. Right. That was the Is time. that you? No. Again? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a professor. I'm always on vacation. <laughs> okay, so can I have a motion? Uh, okay. Uh, Do we? Uh, wait one sec. I, I hate to even bring it up, but the October 4th, was, we're supposed to be in Disney with our kids. That's go to, go to Disney. I hate don't to worry. even I don't say Go to Disney. This is why I mentioned the dates. I know. I don't we were like dreading to. it. You have no idea. Yeah. Right when you said October 4th, I'm like, oh, my God. No. Well, we can... Uh, we can sp we can make a motion with a date to be determined later. Right. You just have to have 10 days notice. So. Move the board of selectmen vote to hold a liquor license violation hearing for non-compliant establishment on a date to be determined. Give the name of the establishment. Oh no. I'm just reading, man. Okay. A d date determined later. Second. Second by Mr. Norton. Uh, further discussion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Great. So we will not make it on October 4th. Oh. Okay. Thank you very much. Without me anyways. <laughs> <laughs> that was the plan. <laughs> Here, take this. Take that stuff, Fox. Right. I love Disney. Right. All right, now you have it. Thank Thanks. You. Okay, moving on to item number five, other business. Anyone have any other business? We talked about the storm. That's been probably the... I got a few. I might as well start. Um, I was pretty quiet during the summer. Um, I just wanted to say thank you to the DPW. They ended up doing the uh, DPW day, I think it was uh, a week ago, uh, before the storm. Uh, touch a chuck would be another way of putting it. But they brought out all of the new equipment to show and demonstrate to the town as well as to the kids that could get on the trucks, take a look at them, backhoes, um, bobcats, skid steer loaders, dump trucks, uh, the salt brine truck, you know, uh, the lawnmower, you know, the, how, do, how does the town mow lawns? Um, I just thought it was a great opportunity uh, put forward by the, uh, the town again to try to open up um, for everybody to take a look at the new equipment that we've purchased uh, that the town uses, as well as for kids to take a look at it. And I, it was well received. Uh, they went out with popcorn, and I commend them all for doing it. It's a great opportunity, again, for the town employees and for the townspeople to, to appreciate what they have. And, um, you know, I spoke with... Um, um, Kevin Cafferty and of course I said geez Kevin you know you should think about uh, doing the same thing when we complain that we need to buy a new truck because the trucks broken down he said that's exactly what they're going to do so for all the adults who you know before uh, we end up getting capital improvements we're going to do another Rusta truck so you can take a look at it and so you can appreciate why when the town says we need new equipment sometimes why we need it 
but uh, that was number one. Uh, the second thing I wanted to say was, um, you know, I want to thank everybody who uh, came to both on Saturday, the uh, parade down in Hummer Rock, the Horribles, um, as well as the uh, parade in uh, Sand Hills, which was the uh, Sand Hills um, Labor Day parade, which was known as the Horribles. I don't know why there's discrepancy between the two, but um, I want to thank the police and the fire department for participating and doing it for all the people who came out. Um, it's a great opportunity for the town to experience Americana. It's a small parade put together by people themselves who enter things, and it's just a, it's a piece of, you know, uh, the uni uniqueness that this town has. And um, <coughs> I have to tell you, uh, it was well done, well received. I also thank the American Legion. They went down in Hummer Rock and hung flags uh, in preparation for it. Uh, they've also done it for Front Street. Uh, during the uh, 4th of July. Those flags came down because of the hurricane. They took them down before the hurricane, but, you know, again, it just shows you how various segments of our, our community work together to make our community a better place to live here. Um, and the other thing I was going to say was, um, you know, with respect, I, I mentioned the Situate Beach Association, the Home Rack Improvement Association. There are, there are like nine beach associations up and down this coast, uh, whether in First, Second, Fourth Cliff, Third Cliff, uh, Mine It, Egypt, um, you know, Sand Hills, or, or down on uh, Hummer Rock. It's just amazing. If you live in these communities, you should get involved because they do an awful lot. And the other, th aside from all the fun things and the, the um, kids' events and um, family events that they do during the summer, they also are instrumental in trying to help people in preparation for storms. So if you live in those vicinities, you really should get involved because they have a huge information source before you lose your electricity um, to really find out what's going on with the storm. What's the current status information you may need to try to batten down the proverbial hatches, help yourself, and, and when to get out. So um, a great opportunity, a great resource for uh, people situated to uh, take advantage of and highly recommend uh, participating and or joining them. Um, it brings me... Why don't you... I know you're affiliated with that one. Oh, uh, this one here. Um, I, yeah, I'm, I'm going to get that one in a second. I still got more. Um, I feel like Rick Murray here. Um, <laughs> of I yesterday. appreciate you saving up all your other business. That's what I said. I thought you covered it. night back. Um, <laughs> I was going to say um, one other, th two, one, two more Hang things. There, um, you know, um, and I didn't get the event, but the, uh, the Lighthouse is celebrating its 200th anniversary. I know it's this month. I don't have a date. I meant to ask with Dave Ball, but people, if you're interested in participating in the uh, Lighthouse Centennial, it's going to be at the Barker. Um, again, it's a part of the Don't Give Up the Ship in Our Town's 375th anniversary. Um, and finally, um, on a more somber note, I also realized um, a few weeks ago that, you know, we're coming up to the 10th anniversary of September 11th. Um, I was kind of stunned by the thought uh, that it's been 10 years, as I'm sure every board member here feels the same way. Uh, this town is actually putting on two events, um, the f both Sunday. One's at the high school in the afternoon, but the one that I want to at least tell people about is the event that's happening at the football field uh, here at the high school at 9.30 on Sunday. Both the uh, police honor guard as well as the fire honor guard and members of this board, along with the Situate and Cohasset football team, will be putting on a ceremony or commemoration, rather, of um, those people who uh, had perished, those people who have sacrificed, and those people who continue to suffer uh, from September 11th, uh, in which uh, even Situate lost one of its, um, um, one of its um, individuals who grew up here, uh, Mr. Roach. So I, I would highly recommend for anybody out there, if, if you're not doing anything, if you're not going to church, come on down to the football field, uh, do homage uh, to that terrible event um, by participating in a, a, an event that remembers uh, all those people who suffered, all the people who have worked so hard. And um, I, again, I, it's the 9.30 at the uh, football field at the high school. So aside from that, Mr. Chair, that's, that's all I have. Good job. Good job. <laughs> Mr. Murray. Yeah, thanks. Uh, first day of school. It's always a great day. Always an interesting day, pouring rain, but uh, I just once again, uh, as you all know, I got four kids, and I'm very impressed with the organization shown by the schools. Got the bus passes fine, we got the letters of who, what teachers you're in, and then like one minute after the letters were delivered, all the text messages and phone calls started coming as the kids were calling around to find out who got what teacher and all this sort of thing. But it's just a very impressive thing, and it's a, it's a, uh, 
it's a great day to see. And the school bus came right on time, despite the pouring rain. And uh, kids came back with all their books, some happier than other kids. But uh, anyways, I just wouldn't wish everybody in the schools and in the town a uh, very good school year as we, as we start this off. That's it for me, Mr. Chair. Right. Andy's on my left. Um, just as, as we're talking about the school, one quick thing, I just wanted to thank the school also, Paul Donlin and the administrator's office for opening up the school showers during the emergencies that we had, um, really on a spur of moment. Um, thank you guys for, for your work there. And um, um, two other quick things I have just to say here that the fisheries are open. Um, they opened uh, effective August 30th, so we can, uh, you can go to the beds and, uh, and take the shellfish that you want. And then another one here that I have to read is, and this is something that will come out as we start um, talking about um, what we gather from the storm that we've dealt with. But um, uh, some people had concerns in not getting the uh, code red messages because uh, the code reds is, used to be called the reverse 911s, but they're now code reds because people didn't have internet and people didn't have phone usage. And some people were aware of the fact that you can actually get those sent to your cell phone. So. Um, what we will is we'll, we'll be giving this information out to people posting on the website so that you can get those uh, messages sent right to your cell phone. Um, again, I'd read this, but no one's going to write down the cell phone numbers or anything. So what we will do is why don't we just post this on the website, um, or we can even send out a blast as we head. It's, uh, if you go to uh, situatepolice.org or situate, uh, town.situate.mass.us, you can find the procedures to get those code red things sent to, sent to your cell phone. It takes about a minute. Basically what it is, it's, it's kind of a uh, more faster, more efficient uh, system. The Sheriff's Department, it's a notification system that we can send out. We have to try to keep the message as brief as possible, but it's, uh, it's faster, it's more efficient, and they had implemented this about uh, two months ago. Uh, but the uh, advantage of this is it'll reach out to your cell phone. You can actually uh, register your, uh, your email address. Uh, we used it three or four times in the storm to uh, get out what we thought was critical information. Uh, and it's, it's a big improvement over the, uh, the old system. Uh, so anybody at, uh, say, I, I, I put myself on to about a minute to do it. Great. Uh, Move on to item number six, correspondences. I don't think there are any in there. None. Number seven, acceptance of minutes. Move the Board of Selectmen vote to accept the meeting minutes of March 30th, 2010, July 13th, 2010, and August 31st, 2010. Second. Is everybody here for all those? Except I Mr. I wasn't here for the last two. Nope, those were a year Those ago. are 2010. 2010, I was here. So Mr. Murray was there, was not forget? on one of them, August 31st. Okay, so let's do the other two first. Right. So I'll strike August 31st, 2010, and I'll keep the first two. Second by Second. Mr. Harris. All yes. in favor? Aye. 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 Move the Board Selectman uh, vote to accept the me uh, meeting minutes of August 31st, 2010. Second. 